Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, I thought about this yesterday. I, I knew that we had the Lord's table today. In verse 23, you may remain seated today. Read just verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show the Lord's death till he come. Father, we thank you again now for this opportunity. One more time. To open the book for just a moment. And Lord, to think on that particular thought. We've thought on that thought many times. We have, we have approached the subject so many times. And Lord, one thing about our church is that we really, Lord Jesus, we believe that you really are coming. We really do believe that. I don't know when, but I believe that you are. And Lord, one more time, you've commanded us to do this today, to show your death until you come. May we be reminded of that today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Till he comes, till he comes. Jesus said this in, in Matthew, and I believe it's repeated in, in the Gospel of Luke also, that as it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And we often take that verse, what was it like in the days of Noah? Well, they were eating, and they were drinking, and they were giving in marriage until the day that the flood came and took them all away. And when you think about that, what's so unusual about that? What's so unusual about eating and drinking and, and people getting married? Nothing. Before the flood came, the world pretty much continued on the, on the course it was, being reminded that they had forgotten God, and that the Bible says this, that it repented God, they had made man. Now, I don't care how you try to explain it, it repented God. God changed his mind about the fact that he'd made men. But thank God, right after that, it says this, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And we think about, oh, they were eating and drinking and giving in marriage until the day that the flood came. Nothing unusual about that. And I think that Christ is trying to tell us that before he comes, the world is going to be on the course that it's taking. But in that chapter 6 of Genesis, this is what else it says about the days of Noah. The earth was filled with violence. We look around us today and, you know, I think, and I, look, I'm not a Catholic, I'm not a, but nobody deserved the way that, by the way, that priest died last week. Those Muslims burst into the church there in Paris and they decapitated the guy right there in church. So with violence. Uh, that 60-year-old American lady over in London, now, at first, they try to say the guy was psycho, but it wasn't psycho. He wasn't psycho. They later found out that he was a radicalized Muslim. That 60-year-old, I believe she was a school teacher. I know she was from America, was stabbed to death in London. This week, I read where six Christians were decapitated, I believe, in Syria by ISIS. We live in a world that is filled with violence. The president doesn't ever want to talk... A president wants to talk about taking my guns away from me so that I can protect you, protect my wife. He doesn't ever say anything. I believe there have been like, I forget how many hundreds and hundreds of people have been killed in Chicago this year. Has one of the strictest gun laws in the country. And he wants to take away our guns and our right to protect ourselves. Because America is filled with violence. We live in a violent society. Not only does the Bible say that the earth was filled with violence, but it says that the earth was corrupt. Now, I don't care how you cut it. If that would have been anybody else than Hillary Clinton, they would have been in jail. But this is what Comey said. I don't want to be the one that would derail a major presidential candidate despite the fact that she is guilty, and last week she lied about lying. I don't think she can tell the truth. But corrupt, the Justice Department, corrupt. It's what they are. And we live in that kind of world. In Europe now, it is now against the law in many countries of Europe to speak your mind if it goes against what the government believes. We live 
in a world filled with violence and corrupt. That's what it was like before the flood came and took them all away. And they knew it not. Now they heard Noah preach. I'm sure, I, look, you can't build a boat out in the middle of nowhere on dry ground. I don't know if you've seen any pictures of that one that Ken Ham built there in Kentucky. That thing is huge. The wonder it took him 120 years, but that ark is huge. I'm sure people of Noah's day must have heard about, hear about the crazy guy building the boat in the middle of the dry land. People must have known about him. They had to know about him. Well, he's warning us that God's going to send a great flood that is going to rain. It's never rain. Huh, it's going to rain. What's rain? And a great flood. Where's all the water going to come from? And they ignored to their own peril. We preach Christ's coming. You say, well, what will it be like when Jesus comes? The earth will be filled with violence. And it will be corrupt. When we read that verse, you show the Lord's death till he come. I thought this yesterday. And I imagine it could be, but how much worse could it get? Well, we may be about to find out. The earth is corrupt. But the Lord encouraged us here, encouraged us here. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Till he comes. I said it. I believe it. We most strongly believe that Jesus is going to come. And he could come today. But if he doesn't come within the next five minutes, one more time we're going to remember what all this is about. Jesus dying for us and paying our sins on the cross. Father, we thank you. Oh, Lord, help us be reminded. Lord, we, again, as I said, Lord, we've thought about till he comes several times, many times. Lord, as we look at the world, it's filled with violence and it's corrupt. Unless we have totally misunderstood the Bible, and I mean totally misunderstood the Bible, Lord, you said you were going to come back. And Lord, we preach that, teach that, believe that. And Lord, we look forward to the sound of the trumpet. In some crazy way, Lord, last night when I woke up, I thought it might be going to happen then. But it didn't. So Lord, we pray even so come, Lord Jesus. But Lord, if you don't come, we're going to one more time remember what you did for us at Calvary. How you perfected one time in one offering. You perfected forever all those that believe. Lord, thank you for that. Bless in these few moments, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.